Hey, Brick Boys and Brick Girls, it's your boy, Brick Boy Lego, and today we have a very special Lego set to review for you guys. We have a Lord of the Rings set. This is technically our first Lord of the Rings set, even though we did review the Hobbit and Unexpected Journey set. This set is the magnificent Orc Forge. Let's get right into it, shall we? That's right, we have the beautiful The Orc Forge set. This is set number 9476, released in 2012, retailed for $39.99, and came with 363 pieces and a beautiful four minifigures. And I mean, this has to be one of my top five favorite Lord of the Rings sets that ever released. If I could go back, I would have gotten more than one of this set. But you know what? Why don't we take a gander at this set right now, get right into it, and take a look at why this set is so great. So starting off with bag number one, you have two minifigures here. You have two little orcs, and you also build a little anvil, which I think is cute. And then you start to build the base of your orc forge here. You slide in a little Technic there for your light brick, and then you build some of the rocky edges of the Orc Forge. And then you put some little plates. I really like this dark gray, and I like the little olive cheese slopes as well. Then moving on to your next bag, you have your last two minifigures. You have an Urukai and Lurts, and then your little side build here is a little smithing station. Then you build the other half of this build. This build is split into two separate sections, even though it does come with three bags, and it slides in with that little blue pegs on the end there. Adding a little play feature there that we'll talk about later, and then you continue building up on the forge. Just definitely be careful when you're building with these brown pieces from the Lord of the Rings era are very brittle, so just be very careful. And then you continue building, and you're already in bag three here and you put some nice Technic here and you're really getting some height with this bag as well. You put on your little wheel, spin her up and around, and then you load up your minecart with some iron ore. Who doesn't like some ore? Build your slide, slide them in, and you are done. Alrighty, and here is the completed Orc Forge. Let's start out by taking a gander at the minifigures. So you have your Mordor Orc here, or your regular Orc. I mean, I love this minifigure. You've got a great, very cool headpiece here. Comes right off. You got those ears. You got that, those eyes. Look at that snaggle tooth. Definitely a very cool minifigure. He's got a hammer, and then you have another one. Comes with two in this set. Um, this one does not come with a headpiece. I think that's um, fine just to give it a little bit more variation of your orcs, but honestly, I probably would have preferred another hairpiece. And then moving on, you have a fully decked out Orakai. And just to give a little bit of a history lesson for you guys, an orc and an Urakai are two totally different things. The Urukai were bred specifically by Saruman, not the same as this kind of orc. So, so Urukai look like this, orcs look like this. Definitely a nice little distinction there. And then, I mean, this minifigure is so cool. You've got your white hand of Saruman on the helmet and on the shield here. Lego did a great job. It looks just like the movies. And then you've got your fighting Urukai sword as well. And then you can take a gander here. You actually have two different options. You can have the regular face print there, or once you answer the question, whom do you serve? Whom do you serve? Saruman. You can have the white hand of Saruman on the face. <laughs> you can see here, that is actually a upside down hand print. There you go. I think that's a nice little feature. I mean, you can't really see it with the helmet on, but it, that's not that big of a deal. And then let's uh, move him over to the side here, and then you have your Lurts. Now, this character was not in the books, but was created for the movies as a big bad. And he's actually the one who kills Boromir. RIP in peace. There he is here, and then he also has the ability to have the white hand on his face too. So I think that's a nice little touch. Let's take a gander at the play features and the other little inclusions that they have here. So starting off, you have a 
little anvil. I thought that this was a very cute and very effective build. It looks just like a little anvil. And your little orc has a hammer, so you can assemble your Urukai army. You can take off the breastplate of the Urukai, put him on there, and you can really show him hammering away on that bad boy creating that armor. And then some of you out there in Middle Earth might be wondering, what is this? And this actually is from the scene when they are creating all the swords and the weaponry. They pour in the cast molds. This is your little molten material. A new order will rise. And then you can see here you've got two swords being made. So that's a nice little touch. And then moving on to the actual build itself, you've got... One of the cooler features here is you have a rarely used light brick. Push the button here in the back. Got fire. There you go. Look at that. You got some fire going on. So you can uh, really heat up your iron to start smithing away. You take a gander in there. You can really see the light brick in action. I like the inclusion of the little flames here too. It really gives you the impression that this is on fire. I really liked how they raised up the base here so you're not just flat on the ground and that you've got this repeating rock formation all throughout the base. So I think that's a really nice addition and makes it look a little bit more imposing. And then we can talk about the old play feature here of the spinning wheel. So you got your iron ore here underneath and you can hook this bad boy right in there so you can lift this up, spin it up and it can be moved on over here. So this is a nice little working wheel. It's actually not that complex of a build. This is completely for show, so you don't need this really at all, uh, this wheel here. But that was a nice feature that they included to make it look like you need it. And then it, this is pretty much just a spinning wheel here. So, you know, actually maybe you did need this because without it, it just goes down. So I think this kind of acts as a counterweight. So it's nice. Very easy, very simple. Another play feature, I guess, here is you've got this little ladder. If you wanted to act like you had to climb up here, you could. There you go, that's orc climbing noises for you. You can put your little cauldron over here. You can have your worker orcs with his shovel, shovel his ore down here so you can slide this down into the pits. Pits, pits, pits. Pits, pits, pits. And then you can have your ore heated up here in the fires of industry. The old world will burn in the fires of industry. And then we can talk about this just as from a stability standpoint, you have to have these two very long technic beams here to make sure that this is very stable. So that I, I liked that. And then back here, so we can load up the old Uruk here, put them in there, and then spin this around. And not included in this set, you have Saruman, the white wizard approaches. The white wizard approaches. You can recreate some of your other favorite Lord of the Rings scenes, such as Saruman telling this orc how the first orcs came to be. Do you know how the first orcs came to be? They were elves once. Do you know how the orcs first came to be? They were elves once. And speaking of being elves once, this is a nice little play feature here. Everybody's favorite kid-friendly scene. You can open this up and you can have your little orc birthed out of the pits here. So that's actually what this is. Um, I think that's a very funny little f inclusion. Um, I really like it. It shows exactly how they were birthed in the movie. There he is. Happy birthday. I mean, overall, this is an amazing set. I love it. My only regret is that I didn't buy more back in the day because it's very expensive now. Definitely kind of a difficult set to be an army builder. And if you're building an army, you're gonna need a lot bigger army than this. But my lord, there is no such force. But my lord, there is no such force. So now why don't we take a gander at Bricklink and see what these minifigures are going for now. So starting with your first minifigure, you have your Mordor Orc with the hairpiece with his ears. 
he's going to run you about 1455 on Bricklink right now. And then your next minifigure is the exact same. However, he does not have the hairpiece. And that's what you're really missing here with your value. He's going to run you about 982. Your next minifigure is going to be the Orakai. And he is the one that's all decked out with the hand of Saruman on his helmet and on his shield. Here you can see him without the armor on. A lot of your value is coming from those white hand pieces. They are only available in two sets. And then last but not least, you have your Lurts minifigure. He's going to run you about 1810 on Bricklink. He is exclusive to this set alone. Only way to get him is in this set. And then here you can give him a little shave and you can see both of his face prints here and his back print a little bit more clearly. So what do we think about the Orc Forge set? Is it as hyped up as I had made it out to be? I still think so. I love this set because I really like the Orcs. I can really relate to them. Yeah. When are we going to get some meat? Why can't we have some meat? Speaking of getting some meat, huge news here. Next year in 2023, the Lord of the Rings theme is coming back. That's right, folks. We did it. Lord of the Rings coming back. To Lego. We have two Brickheads sets coming out later in early 2023 and a very expensive, rumored to be around $500, direct consumer Lego set of the Lord of the Rings and there's no details on that set just yet. But we're getting a little sidetracked here. I'm just very excited that they're coming back to Lord of the Rings. Maybe they'll make a better way to get a army builder for the orcs. That would be ideal. So, I mean, I'm gonna give this set a five out of five. It's it's amazing. I mean, this set is one of the only sets that you can get the white hand of Saruman on the orc armor. So I really love that. I mean, they just have so many details and it looks just like you're preparing for Helm's Deep which is another set that we'll review at some point here. So, I mean, that's going to do it for today's review. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you have not done so already. And tune in next time for more Lord of the Rings reviews coming soon.